Okay, in this lesson here, what we're going to be doing is setting up our vehicle for the rigging process and then go ahead and get the initial skeleton, the initial part of the rig into place. That's right. So, first of all, why would we split this up into various files? Well, let's first do it, and then we'll talk about why we did it, because it'll be a lot easier to see. All right, so let's go to the outliner. Just select the turret, and just go up to File, Save Selection, Export Selection, and just call it Turret. So, think we've just saved, uh, saved it out. And hit the delete key. And hit the delete key. Then we can select the left minigun. Now, we can delete the right minigun out and just export the left minigun. Because when we get into code a little bit later on in another VTM, we're going to show you how in the game basically we'll be spawning two of those objects. Right, so we can just use one. And so let's just rename this to minigun, go up to file, export selection, and we'll just call this minigun. minigun. And of course, just delete that out. And we'll go ahead and save this scene as just the buggy. buggy. And just leave buggy start there. So that's all the files saved out. Okay, so let's go ahead and real quickly jump into the other files. All right. And there's one, I just want to show you guys one important thing. So let's open the turret. Okay, and so if we do two things, if we frame it up and we show the grid. Okay, check this out. The main reason we did this was that we want to take and make sure that the grid, two things. One, that the grid is um, the center point of well, hang on. Let me say this in a different way because this can come across a little confusing. That the turret has its axes at the center base, in other words, down here, which is where it's at at the moment, because this is what's going to be attaching to a bone on our vehicle when we spawn this in, into game. Right. And also that this center axis right here, the axis for the turret, is center on the grid. Right. So what we want to do is come in here and just use our grid snap and think, move it right to the top of the grid. So okay, let me let me kind of push the idea here. Let me just get this across. The reason we want to do this is right now this object can kind of be seen as zero zero zero. I mean, even though that's not its translate X Y and Z numbers, I mean that is where it's at. It's at the origin of the world. And that way, when we bring this uh, object right here into Unreal at game time, we spawn it in and we tell it to attach to a bone. It's going to attach directly to that bone with no offset. If we were to move this away from the center of the grid, there would be an offset. So it That's would right. spawn away from the point in which we tell it to attach inside the game. Exactly. So let's go ahead and save this out since we have moved it. And if we would have left the turret in the scene with the buggy, that would have been kind of funny to have snapped that to the center yeah. and it would have been protruding through the buggy. It would have been kind of weird. So let's go ahead and open the minigun and do the same thing for it. And just say, grab our move tool and snap it right to there. So, hey, very nice. So let's just save that out and open back up our buggy. And this guy is already in the correct location. Right. So let's go ahead and grab this buggy. I guess we can go ahead and start boning him up. Yeah, sounds good. So let's go into here. And what I like to do is grab all four of these wheels, and we need to create the wheel bones in the exact center of these wheels. Otherwise, we'll get a wobbling effect. That's right. Basically, you can view this kind of as the, the pivot in which the wheel is going to turn around. That's right. So an easy way to do this, if we switch over to wireframe, we can grab all four of these wheels, go up to display, and then component, component. display, and selection handles. So now if you look inside, we have the exact center of each of the wheels. So we can, well, create our joints and snap them to these points. So a lot more easy. So let's go to Skeleton with our animation menu set. Skeleton, Joint Tool. And just with Point Snap, think Point Snap right to there. And they're a little bit small right now. So what we can do is go to Display, Joint Size, Custom, and you know what? Let's turn it up a lot. Something like that. Yeah, looks good. So right about to there. And we'll just press Y to reinvoke the tool. Point Snap to this guy. Because we want to be creating them separately because their rotations are going to be separate. That's right. And if he would not have hit Y, it would have stayed with the same operation. So right, in other it words, just it continues. Have, that's right. It would have just continued the skeletal hierarchy. So let's just press Y again. And press V, snap to there. Press Y, V, snap to there. Simple as that. So with that, let's go ahead and press Y and create the root as well. So let's go up to here and rename it to root. So this is going to be our root. And let's just press W and grab this root. And let's just set it's translating X, Y, and Z to zero. So he's at the origin. That's right. And what we can do is take all these four joints right here and drag them into root. So now they're children of the root. 
So let's go ahead and hide our polygons for just a minute inside right. this viewport. So we can go into here, hide polygons, and check it out. We've already have a sort of web going on. Yeah, now what about the rotation of the joints? Now that is an important thing. If we go to our joint one, and let's make sure, go into our move tool and switch over to object so that we can see the object rotation, uh, where it's pointing anyway. We can come up to here, and what we need this rotate in X to be is negative 90. So we want it to be Y pointing back, Z pointing up, and well, X pointing out. Well, that's right, because we're going to be rotating around the X axis, and let's not forget that over in Unreal, it is a Z up environment. That's right. So for all four of these joints here, which are all for the wheels, we want the rotate in X to be negative 90. Think, simple as that. So, now an important thing to do is rename these joints. Now, if we turn back our polygons, so show polygons, this is the um, front left wheel, or left front tire. Right. So what we want to do is, now these names can be anything you want, but they need to correspond to the names you use inside of your script. So as long as they're the same as what's in the script, they can be anything you want. And that, um, the convention that we're using is just left front tire. And pretty much the same for all of the other ones. This is going to be left rear tire. This one right here is going to be right front tire. And this one right here is going to be right rear tire. So kind of self-explanatory. Now what we need to do is create the struts. And these are what are going to be used to calculate the suspension by the physics engine. So all they need to be is kind of placed in the position of where the the suspension would be calculated. So you can kind of eyeball it, if you will. So I like to take these two. Uh, let's just undo that. Grab these two guys. Press Control D to duplicate them. Just move them in and move them up a little bit. And what I like to do is just turn on the um, shaded, mode. shaded mode. Grab this guy and just put him in a fairly good position. So something like that. So it calculates the suspension between these two points. And then we can grab this guy right here. Move him up and move him back. Something like that. Now we can do exactly the same thing for the other side and get it pretty much lined up the same way. So we can grab these two right here, duplicate them over, move them out, and maybe switch to a top view. Makes life a little bit easier. So I'll switch over to wireframe and just line it up to about the same position here. So right about like that. Take him right here and move him right back to there. And just make sure in the side view they're lined up about the same. So. This guy right here should be moved up to about there. And this guy right here moved up to about there. So and of course, naming becomes important here as well. That's right. If we open our outliner a little bit more and switch over to a perspective view, this is going to be the left front strut. So let's rename this and just change the end to strut. This one right here is going to be right rear strut. No, left rear strut, excuse me, what was I thinking? As I Jordan forgot his left from his right. Yeah. So this is right front strut. And right rear strut. Think simple as that. So that's all the bones necessary to get the basic workings of a vehicle. Now do you want to talk a little bit about the strut model? No. Uh, the strut model? Yeah, it's something that we don't have. Oh, but right, right, right. I see what you're saying. All you need, sometimes if you look at the vehicles inside of Unreal, Unreal 2004, they have certain suspension systems that you have set up. Well, it's very easy. In this vehicle, we didn't really want to put them in. Yeah, we're just trying to keep the whole demonstration simple. That's right. But all you need to do is skin your strut system to, say, the strut bone. And what it'll do is calculate the rotations accurately and so on and so forth. So it makes creating a strut system very, very simple if you want to go ahead and do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, you say rotations. You mean translations? Uh, the translations and rotations of, of the struts. Your struts is going to uh, spin around? Um, that's going to rotate around if you look at, let's take this bone for example, or the right, right, left, rear, Back thank you. <laughs> um, it will rotate around this way to calculate this, um, the sp suspension. I got you. I see what you're saying. So, that's, that's really simple. And, of course, we need to make sure that the left front strut are also rotated negative 90 so that that's all set up. So all four of these are going to have the same rotation as the front tires. So, that's pretty cool. Now what we need to do is set up three more bones for the two miniguns at the front and the turret at the back. 
Now these are going to have slightly different rotations. So let's create this. Now, technically, these are, in a sense, spawn points, right? Right. All all that's going to happen is when it's spawned, the turret is going to be attached to this foam. So, in other words, when the vehicle is spawned into the game, what's going to happen is it's going to cause the turret to become spawned in the game and attached to that point. Exactly. Which is interesting. I'm just wanting to point this out because if somebody's making some type of elaborate, huge... A land traveling war machine, and they wanted to attach turrets all over the place. They could do that simply. They just need to continue following the process we're demonstrating here That's by right. having a whole lot of bones brought into the mix. Right. Already we have the basic structure, the, the necessary bones to get a working vehicle, but these are for the weapons, etc. That's right. So let's create a bone, a joint, or whatever you want to call it, um, and just move this up into the correct position. And X, we could just zero it out since we want him to be in the center. And just line this up however you see fit, so right about right about like that. So it's right in the back. And we can just call this whatever we want. We can say turret. And as long as in the script we refer to it as turret, everything's fine. And we'll come back to the rotation in just a second. We can do exactly the same thing. Just duplicate this guy and put him in a position for the for the um miniguns. Talking, moving all at the same time, you know, it can be hard. So you're snapping in one direction. I am, I know. So just take this guy, curve snap him over to here, and duplicate and him he's over. he's just holding C to do the little curve snap operation. Ah, right. And middle clicking. And middle clicking. And snapping. And snapping right to about there. I'm liking that. And what we can do is come in here and say, this is going to be gun attachment one. And naming this, grabbing the name. Pasting it over here, gun attachment two. Okay. So now all we need to do is get the rotation set up accurately. So what we need to do is change the rotation in X and Y to negative 90. And you'll notice what's what we've just done here is set up basically a Z up world scenario. So Z is pointing up, X is pointing forward, and Y is pointing out. That's right. So this is exact Z world situation. So we can do the same thing for all three of these bones. So take these guys and say negative 90. And not setting this up is going to end up putting you in a position where you're just going to become frustrated because you're going to be dealing with uh, weapons that come in and become attached, pointing backwards, upside down, right. all sorts of different you know ways if you don't have it uh, set up with the rotations proper. It's not a pretty situation. Negative. So we'll just make sure all three of these are set to negative 90 in both X and Y. And you know what? That should be everything for setting up and rigging a vehicle. All the rotations are set up accurately and we've set the correct bones and we've named them according to the way we want them to be named. That's right. Okay, so, so with that really that's going to wrap up this lesson on just the basic rigging of our vehicle. Thanks a lot.